welcome back to my homestead. Today I'm coming to you with a very honest and open conversation about what is going on right now today in a supply chain for everything that we use in everyday life. And we as homesteaders and even if we were not homesteaders, we pay attention to what is going on right now um, out there and we want to be prepared just in case. So again, I just want to come to you. This is not a political discussion. This is not a political conversation. This is not about picking sides or spreading fear because I am not about spreading fear. I'm about spreading encouragement and being prepared just in case something does come along. So many people prep per se or prepare and store away here a little bit and there a little bit uh, for many different reasons uh, it could be i don't know a storm a hurricane and people are prepared in case there is a disruption in supply chain right for that particular time other people may um, prepare and store away a little bit in case there's a changes in the lifestyle or family changes or loss of a job and people may have to rely on what is being stored away put away and they're going to be living in that other people store away because that is just a way of life we grow things in the summer you my gardening friends my homesteading friends you know what i'm talking about we grow big gardens in the summer we work all spring all summer we harvest and then we store away and we eat what we have raised whether it, it is our own livestock whether it is our own vegetables and for many people maybe it's all their own grains we don't grow grains but you know what i mean whatever you raise whatever your family eats so we work very hard to raise our own food as much as we can because we know how it was raised we know how it was prepared we know how it's been stored and we try to stay away from chemicals and other things um, that we try to keep our bodies clean because you know we are the temple so um i just want to come to you guys today with a little kind of nudge that I'm feeling every day because, and I know it's not of myself, but it's, this is what I'm sensing. This is what I see that's going on. And many of you probably already noticed that some of the items already missing from the grocery store shelves. And sometimes it's only a front where you only see one package on the shelf and behind that package is all empty so they will like display like for example I saw that at one of them a local markets they had sugar 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 but behind it was all empty so it was only one row of sugar really so again I this is not about hey get in your car go and empty the shelves out like ba uh, panic buying it's not about that so again I just want to come to you with an open heart and to give you a little encouragement and a little nudge in the right direction you know, um, some people may think that Mama Lil is crazy. It's okay. I'm okay with that. When Noah was building his ark, many people know the Noah story simply because of the animals, you know, walking to the ark. I'm thinking of that story a little bit differently. See, he and his family were obedient to the command he was given. And it took a long time to build that gigantic ark that was very specific with the very specific measurements and the wood it had to be used and everything. And I'm sure it took a long time to build it. And I am also sure that people thought he was crazy. People made fun of him. And people thought he was absolutely lost his marbles. But it's okay. He continued doing what he was told to do so i want to be obedient to what i am sensing right now as well and i know that there is a lot of things right now in the news as well about the possibility of uh, shortages coming this fall and this winter i know there's a lot of stuff in the media and we can't fall into fear but we need to rely on the common sense god-given sense that we have the wisdom that he has given us so friends I want to talk to you about prepping. I know it sounds so crazy. A little prepping, nothing crazy, but something to store away and put away. So I want to start by saying, I have I made a little list so I will not forget. Um, so first and foremost, we need to think about water. 
why am I t talking about water? So recently here in New England, in our region, we had a really crazy storm and many of us lost power. I heard that some of our friends had no power for five days. No generator, five days. That means there is no electricity, no heat, possibly no running water. So if that happens, we need to have water stored away. And the federal agency, um, uh, emergency management agency, FEMA, they suggest to store away one gallon of water per person per day. Okay. One gallon per person uh, of water per day. So, um, you may decide what you're going to be doing for your family. What is best? Do you have a place to store it? How can you store it? So you guys have to do a little homework. It's just a little suggestion that water is important, very important. And then, um, I also like, like to look around our family and our kitchen and our habits and what we like to do. And I can positively testify and my family can agree with me. The biggest item that we used up during pandemic last year when we were in a lockdown, coffee. We consumed so much coffee. We were home, working from home, school from home. We consumed lots and lots of coffee. So stock up if you are coffee drinkers, stock up on some coffee. But we need to think of whatever foods we want to store away is that it has to be nutrition dense foods. I know a lot of people do run out and buy boxes of, um, what's that, Roman noodles it's called. And, you know, sometimes it's fun to eat a little junk food. And sometimes my teenage kids ask me for some junk food. And I get it. And I support that. Once in a while, it's fun. But that's not should be the, the main part of the food storage. So some of the items and group of food groups that I want to talk about is kind of like um, those major staple things that you consume in your household, in your family. One is, we talked about water already, right? Uh, the other one, I want to talk about proteins. So a lot of people, um, especially those who live in smaller apartments uh, or live in the inner city, do not have uh, a big freezer storage so they often rely on buying meats uh just for one day for two days or whatever and i do know that uh the prices for meat the prices are growing rapidly and i do also know that some of the stores already have put a limit uh for how many pounds you can buy per person so uh if we don't have to worry about it we raise our own but if you do not, I suggest stocking up and either freezing it um, enough for a prolonged period of time or um, finding something that's already canned. Um, so proteins such as meats, chicken, beef, that sort of thing. Fish, beans. Beans are super cheap. And I know people make fun of rice and beans. But yes, rice and beans, they go far um, as far as... Uh, calorie dense foods. So beans can be bought in cans and dried. Um, how can you store? Well, obviously you can store just like I have it right here in a container. I open them out of a plastic and I put them in a container and that's how I store my beans if I have to. Um, if I want to store a lot of beans, then I get these buckets. These are food grade buckets. They are five gallon buckets and you can purchase them from Lowe's, from Home Depot, Tractor Supply, you name it. But what I really like about these buckets is this gamma leaf lids. Let, let me show you. Okay, so it's a round lid. It goes on top and it spins very, very tight, okay? So you um, can just dump it just like this if you're gonna be using it uh, within the next few months. But for a long, long-term uh, storage, you need to first put it in the Mylar bags, uh, seal them with, uh, with oxygen absorbers, and then put them in the food um, um, grade buckets, just like this, okay? But what I'm saying is that these buckets are very, very useful. So proteins, uh, tuna fish, um, salmon, sardines. Sardines are very, very um, nutrition dense food. So I suggest stocking up on sardines, tuna fish, that sort of thing, because they readily, uh, you open and you can serve it cold, just like that. So frozen, dehydrated, canned. Um, uh, there's also some companies that uh, sell eggs that are powdered eggs. 
uh, those can be dehydrated, uh, rehydrated and made like into cooking, into baking or just scrambled eggs. And they're actually not that bad. So vegetables, let's talk about vegetables. And yes, you can go to produce aisle and buy fresh and that's great. But as I've told you guys, you know, there is a conversation about shortages and possibly a breakdown in a delivery system. So because of that, it is would be a prudent thing to put away some frozen vegetables, canned vegetables and dehydrated. So here's an example of my dehydrated carrots. I dehydrated them and I take just a handful um, and I rehydrate it in a soup, in a stew, in a casserole and it's great. Or I have my uh, greens that I just dehydrated, bunch of them, and it's a beautiful thing. I added to a stew I made yesterday. It was great. You can also have canned vegetables. So these are pickled tomatoes, for example. Um, so not just frozen. They can be dehydrated. They can be canned. We're not big into canned vegetables. But yes, if you guys want to do canned vegetables, it's fine as well. So you need to store in what your family will eat. Just because your neighbor or your friends may be buying it, it doesn't, doesn't mean it's good for you. Look through your, um, through your recipes and see what you cook for your family. Um, also a great way to store vegetables is by fermenting vegetables. So sauerkraut, fermented carrots, um, zucchinis, and I have a few other videos that I have done of fermented vegetables. They provide really good probiotics in a time of stress. It's good for your gut. It's good for your immune system. So fermented vegetables also is a great way to store vegetables. Fruit. Um, obviously fresh fruit is great, right? But what if there is a breakdown in a supply chain? So frozen fruit is great because they can be put in a smoothie, in um, um, baked with that. So it's a great source of giving good vitamins and fiber to your family. But you can also have frozen fruit. So I have frozen, um, excuse me, dehydrated fruit. But dehydrated fruit can be raisins, for example, is a great source of sugar, sweetness, and it's good, um, good kind of snack as well. Um, so frozen, dehydrated, and canned fruit as well. Um, obviously, jams is great way of storing um, some sweetness, some fruit. Let's talk about starches. Okay, starches. There's so many starches out there. And one of the starches that I like to store is uh, oatmeal. Oatmeal is so, so good and it's so easy to store. And again, you can store them in smaller containers. I just don't like to keep anything in the plastic bags or put them in the big five gallon uh, bucket as well. With that, you can bake breakfast you can add them into soups to thicken it or you can even bake it in breads and muffins that sort of thing other starches let's talk about flour do you guys remember what happened last march april may when people could not find flour in supermarkets and people were calling me and saying hey mama lil can i borrow some flour because they knew i had some flour um Find some flour that uh, you're going to be able to st store safely away from moisture, again, in a air sealed container so bugs don't get in um, because you don't want to get any kind of little unpleasant um, bugs in your flour. But flour is great to store. Just today, um, I started sourdough bread and baking bread is so much more delicious at home and so much more cheaper. I actually, my husband and I, we did the math uh, not too long ago and without my labor and without spending um, the, the stove electricity uh, propane type of thing, it cost me about 15 cents to bake a loaf of sourdough bread and it's absolutely wonderful. Okay, so other starches, rice. Rice is great. The only thing I will recommend is brown rice does not store well because it has a lot of oils and it goes rancid fast. So brown rice, unless it's for very short term. But white rice, again, in a glass container, in a big bucket is great to store and it's so easy to cook. It's going to be a great meal for your family. Um, what else? Pasta. I know 
it's a quick meal. If your kids like uh, macaroni and cheese, you can already buy those little packages. But what I'm saying is that have it on hand, have it available, because we don't know what may happen with the distribution and with supply. But on top of that, guys, um, have you noticed that the package is the same box of cereal, for example, yet when you open the bag, it's half empty? Yeah, it's called inflation. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, the bags are half empty, yet the price is the same or even higher. All right, so we talked about rice, we talked about flour, we talked about pasta. Those are great, simple, dry goods you can store away as much as you want to, and they do have long shelf life. Let's talk about oils. So um, I like to store a variety of oils. I like to store ghee, the clarified butter. It's a beautiful uh, shelf-stable product. I make it myself um, because purchasing it already prepared is kind of pricey. But it's, it's very, uh, it's delicious. I love cooking with it. Um, but you can make it yourself and I probably should make a video about that. But also olive oil. I like to store, uh, regular olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, all cold pressed. Coconut oil is great to store. Avocado oil. I do stay away for, uh, away from, uh, vegetable oils, corn oils, those sort of things. Because, um, if the fast food places are buying them to fry their foods, Stay away from those oils. They're not healthy for us. But, uh, but I do store, um, oils in, including our own rendered lard that we have from our, uh, animals. <clears throat> Other things, salt, sugar, those are, are important to store away because they may be used for many different things, uh, as food, as far as food preservation and as far as everyday cooking. Honey is indefinite shelf life, right? Um, honey is such a great product to store for health purposes and it's just delicious. Uh, maple syrup. Maple syrup can be stored indefinitely as well. So buy the pure maple syrup, not the fake one um, that is usually mixed and diluted with, um, with corn syrup. So stay away from those. Make sure it's a simple, uh, pure maple syrup. Uh, vinegars. Vinegars, uh, as far as apple cider vinegar, is great to be, uh, this is my homemade, is great for cooking, it's great for beauty products, for hair rinse, for uh, skin care, but it is good for health as well, and it's really good when you're making, uh, when you're cooking. But I also like to, to store away some, uh, white distilled vinegar, because that is great for, um, for, for cleaning as, cleaning products. Also, it's really good for whitening your clothing if you needed to whiten something. And so since we're talking about vinegars, let's talk to you about hygiene products. So I have this little, um, I have this little saying that I like to use when you're down to four, buy 10 more. So for my family of four people, I find it useful to always have items such as shampoo, conditioner, uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, what else, soaps, um, floss, Q-tips, things like that. Things that you need for toiletries type of thing. I always like to have enough for one year, for a whole year. So we, I usually look at my shelf and when I have down to four, of items, I need to purchase 10 more. And that gives me time to find coupons, to look up things what's on sale, and then buy 10 more. And then that's how I replenish. So I like to keep that in mind always. When you're down to four, get 10 more. So um, there are websites that provide a very itemized, very specific list of what kind of foods are recommended per person per week per month and per year. Uh, so it all depends on how much you want to store and uh, how many people you have in your family. So you may ask me right now, okay, Mama Lil, sounds like you live in a house on a homestead, so you probably have space to store your food. And I will agree with you, yes, um, we live in a house on a homestead, so we do store away our own grown food. But what happens to people who live in apartments? Well, what I'm, what I'm about to say, I don't want to be rude, and it's not about being rude, it's me being honest. 
So someone has asked me that question not too long ago. And um, that individual said, well, you know, where, where would I store all this food that you're recommending? Besides the toilet paper and paper towels and paper goods, that sort of thing. And this is what I said. How many pairs of shoes do you have? And that person started answering me, oh, I have so many winter shoes, so many summer shoes. And I said, okay, where do you store it? If you have space to store all those shoes that you just named, that means you can find space to store away food as well. Remember, I'm talking about shelf stable foods. Okay. Oh, I forgot to talk about one more thing. Medications. Medications are important. So I already read an article, um, that there is a shortage on some of the medications um, because a lot of it is uh, imported to the U.S. because we don't produce it here. It comes from either India or China. And this is what I'm going to say. So next time we need to, if you are taking prescription medications and your life depends on it, ask for three months supply because that will give you a little bit more room than rather than 30 days supply. But you know me, I'm about homemade medications and these are my tinctures and these are my dried herbs. So I know that I have enough and, and I continuously replenish what I have so I can take care of simple ailments uh, that might be coming up in my, my family, my household but also stock up some of the over-the-counter medications while they're still available, okay? Like, I don't know, whatever you take for uh, for bowel, for um, uh, for immunity as far as vitamins, um, some something for your pain, whatever you need to, whatever you need to think about because the flu season is right around the corner. So again, friends, think of spaces in your household or excuse me, in your house where you could possibly Put this bucket somewhere, a couple of buckets, say one bucket of sugar, one bucket of flour, maybe beans and rice. So you have four buckets. Think where you, where you can be stored. Okay. Uh, in the closet, perhaps, um, uh, or make, um, um, how do you call it? One of those plastic boxes where you can put canned goods and put it under your bed. Things, things like that. You have to be creative sometimes. Uh, keep in mind that a lot of foods should be rotated. So look at the expiration dates. And by the way, oh, very often the expiration dates are pretty suggestive, uh, suggested, meaning that, um, they can, they can have a longer shelf life. It's just that's when it's suggested to be used by. But again, rotate your foods, rotate your foods. So friends, I come to you again just to think about what is happening right now. And I hope you are uh, paying attention and, um, and not falling into fear, not falling into panic. And rather than being reactive to what's happening, be proactive and use the wisdom that you, uh, the God given natural wisdom that we have and say to yourself, well, you know what? I don't like what I see and hear right now. Let me go and stock up on few staple items that will hold us over if anything does happen okay because let's face it if you have good nutrition good hydration good rest and good family you can survive this little whatever it might be happening right now in the world so friends be encouraged and try something new